Hi guys, how are you? Um, welcome to Pro Prophetic Intercession, uh, Intercession at Work. And I want to do a quick teaching um, concerning prayer. Um, so <laughs> I have had a long day, a real long day. And um, I just wanted to bring this teaching before I transition you know, to my bed. <laughs> so today I had um, an awesome day. My day's been real full. And today I had teaching on prophetic intercession. How to pray, how to release the word. Nothing new to me, but I know the word of God. I mean, I know that the word of God sometimes becomes dormant in our lives. So we need to Activate the word of God. Allow the word of God to become active in our lives. Amen. By speaking the word daily and often. And when we pray, we should always pray in the spirit. And I feel like that's one of those that's one of those components that we generally don't do. We don't pray in the spirit. Praise God. Hi guys. Welcome on board. And that's one of the things that we don't do. We don't pray in the spirit and we don't pray often. And we need to hear the voice of God when praying. Amen. So what I want to do, I want to just do a quick teaching on the weapons that we need to be using when we are praying. Okay. Some of you might be aware of it, but because you're aware, it doesn't mean you're doing it. Okay. If you're doing it, making it applicable to your life, that means you have gained the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding how to use God's word in your prayer life. Okay. So when praying, you need to have the blood of Jesus. Amen. You need to... Um, speak the blood of Jesus, speak the name of Jesus, speak the love of Jesus Christ and release the joy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Those are the, those are the things that we need to learn how to apply the word of God and make the word of God alive in us. You know, the word is sharper than a two edged sword. If the word is a discerner, the word knows how to separate. Amen. Hebrews uh, chapter four, verse 11. So it's so important to understand how to use the word of God. Let the word become active. One of the things that I love when I pray I love to release the prayer mantle over my life. Speak the covering over my life. I need to know what my assignments are when I am praying. It's important It's important for you, just as well as me, to know what your prayer assignments are. And when you begin your prayer assignments, do you watch your prayer to the end? Do you watch and pray? Do you see the manifestations of your prayer when you are praying? Now... You need time to think about that. I understand that. But that's something we need to think about. We are called to be watchmen. We are called to be intercessors. We are called to sound the alarm. Anyone who prays and prays in the spirit has the ability to hear the voice of God and release the word of God when praying. That's called prophetic utterance, prophetic intercession. Amen. So when you pray that way, things will begin to be executed, not just in your life, but in the life of people that you are praying for. Because many times we pray for people that we don't know. We have no idea who we're praying for, but we're praying for them because we're being led. We have the unction of the Holy Spirit. So he propels us to begin to pray. Sometimes you might wake up at odd hours of the night and <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, no, I don't want to wake up like me. I don't want to wake up. But you wake up anyhow because it's better to be obedient than to um, sacrifice. Amen. So when you're praying, pray with the blood, the blood of Jesus. Amen. When you play, pray, execute the name of Jesus. Always pray in the spirit, pray with the authority, which is the name of Jesus Christ. Speak the word of God. Let the word of God be stirred up in you. Let the word of God come alive in you. Amen. It's so important to understand that. Amen. Allow the spirit of love and joy to take dominion and reign. Let it be a, a mantle over your life. In other words, repent. Before you enter into the courts, make sure you are repenting in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask our Father to forgive you of your sins. Amen. Ask him to have mercy upon your soul in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't let nothing block you or hinder you from receiving what God has for you in the kingdom of God. Uh, one of the things to honor God is with your finances. So I want to quickly share this with you. One of the things that I have started 
and I'm going to share this prayer point with you, is breaking demonic cycles over my finances. Break, 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 breaking demonic cycles over my finances. If you are having financial problems, if you don't if you don't see a release in your finances, get your money together, your checkbook, credit card, whatever, your bank statements, your debt, credit cards, whatever you have, and begin to speak the name of Jesus over your finances. If it's your marriage, your children, whatever the situation is, only you know, amen? But you want to break the cycles. Because one of the things that people keep telling me, they see themselves going around and around and around the same mountain all the time. So the other day when I was meditating upon the word of God, the spirit of the Lord began to minister to me and say, speak to that mountain. Speak to the mountain that is hindering you. Speak to the mountain that is blocking you. So whatever that mountain is, you say, mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea. Align yourself up with that scripture and begin to speak that word over any of any situation that is blocking you or delaying you or opposing you in your prayer life. Amen. So break every demonic cycle, break every demonic cycle over your finances, break any negative bank account statement, whatever you have, break, break, break it in the mighty name of Jesus. I release that over you right now. Break. If you're having a hard time making offerings, or if you're a person who tithes and you struggle with that, break the demonic cycles off your finances because the enemy knows that when you begin to sow, that there's going to be a release from the spirit realm into the earth for you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I really want to share that with you. Now, um, I'm getting ready to get off, so I'm going to share one more thing with you. And I'd like to say hi. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Hi, Melissa. Hello, praise God. Hi, Tamara Harris, Joanne, praise God, praise God. And hi, my girl, Stacy. <laughs> bless you, woman of God. And bless you, Callie. Amen. So I want to share a prayer point with you, then I'm going to get off, okay? So a couple of weeks, um, in the month of September, I was having some, um, uh, I don't know what I was going through, but I was going through something. And, and it was very, and it was disturbing me. And um, I needed a way out. I needed a quick turnaround with whatever it was at that time that was uh, causing me to struggle. Amen. And sometimes challenges come to mature us. Sometimes challenges come to, um, let me see what I put, uh, to make our life difficult. So... When there's certain things that's occurring in our lives and it's making it, making it difficult for us, we we need to learn how to speak the word alive. I mean, because the word is not dead; the the word is alive. I mean, so you have to learn how to speak the word of God and let the word become active in you. Let the word of God stir in you. You know, I said that earlier, but I want to I want to reinforce that again. You can't be slowful with the word of God. Do you have to pray? With the anointing. So you have to change your atmosphere. Put on some worship music. You know, get into the condition of being consistent with your prayer life. Because the more consistent you are with your prayer life, when opposition or challenges come, you will know how to speak to it. I mean, you will know how to say, be cast down. You will know how to say, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I mean, you don't have to rally with Satan. You don't have to tell Satan you're underneath my feet. You don't have to tell Satan that. You just speak the word of God. I mean, because it's the word that fights your battles. It's the word that say, the word say, I avenge your enemies. I mean, not you. So when we start collaborating and having a back chat with Satan, we are already operating out of a place of defeat. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you four prayer points that I used that gave me victory. Gave me victory in the month of September and it will give you victory in the month of October if you listen. Amen. And apply the word. Okay. So number one, Abba Father wants to give us a prayer mantle. That's number one. Abba Father wants to give us a prayer mantle. Amen. Praise God. Hey, Marilyn. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Praise God. Bless you. Um, 
Number two, Abba Father wants to give us a prayer sword. The word of God is a prayer. It's a sword. We, it's, it's a covering and it's a sword. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. The word of God is a discerner. It's sharp. It cuts asunder. It separates. It, it tears into the bones, into the marrow. It goes into the depth of the person, okay? Whatever you're praying about, praise God. So once again, the word of God divides and it parts. Amen? The word of God is a prayer mantle. The word of God is a prayer sword. And the word comes to divide separate part amen praise god number four where there is no way the word of god will make a way <laughs> where there is no way the word of god will make a way when you are going through your personal struggles make that your daily confession when there is no way for man there is a way for god the word of god will make a way out of no way when you begin to confess that Things will begin to get into motion. Now, I want to be very frank with you. Nothing will be activated in your life if you're not moving by faith. If you're moving by sight, you're done. Okay? You're null and void. You might as well just say, forget it. But if you're moving by faith and hearing the word of God by faith, you will be able to activate what I'm speaking here right now. Amen? So, every word that you're going to speak will be anointed in the name of Jesus Christ. So when you begin to pray, remember your words are anointed in the name of Jesus Christ. Just put your hands on your head and just begin to decree and declare. Let the word be established in your life. Every word that I speak right now is anointed in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God is anointed to destroy the yokes and remove the burner. So whatever burden is in tribulations you may be having the word of god has the ability to destroy it amen why because your words are anointed in jesus name amen amen every word that will come out of my mouth amen is anointed in the name of jesus every prophetic utterance every confession that i speak is anointed in the name of jesus every word that i speak it is anointed it's anointed it's Filled with the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. When my words are anointed, I can divide and, and, and make a way out of no way. When my words, your words are anointed, you can divide and part. Your words will make a way out of no way. What is impossible for man <laughs> isn't impossible for God. God is a God of possibility. As long as you show up, and, and do what he tells you to do, he will make things all possible. Amen. That's all Moses needed to do. He needed to show up, <laughs> get to Egypt, and fulfill the assignment that God told him to do. But when he started saying, well, I'm a father, praise God. He said, um, amen, praise God, man. He said, I believe, when, he, when he met with God in the cave, he said, uh, and God said, who are you to tell me what you cannot do? Am I not the God who made your eyes, your nose, your mouth, who made your tongue, your ears? So obviously we are praying to a creator who has the ability to still create. So your words are your create. That's your creation. Whenever you speak, it comes to life. So Abba and Father tells us in the book of Proverbs, there's life and death in the tongue. Whatsoever you speak, if I mean, it, it, it's going to be activated. If you sick, if you can't constantly speaking sickness, death, broke, busted, uh, don't have a job, don't have a, don't have a, you know, all this. I can't even get in alignment with that. I'm sorry. I'm trying to use that as an example, but for me. I can't get in alignment with that because that's not God. But when I speak life, hey, I speak abundance, multiplications, increase, double portion, huh? When I begin to confess like that, the word of God comes alive in me. The prayer mantle in my life is now executed in me. The sword of the spirit is now alive to destroy whatever opposition is mounting itself against me in the name of Jesus, against you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the word of God will make a way where there is no way. All right. The word. So what, 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 what in your life needs to be made a way? So this is what I use. So I said, my words are anointed. My words are 
anointed, I can divide, I can divide with the word of God. I can part with the word of God where there is no way in my business. I can make a way with my words, my noise, my words are anointed. I can make a way where there is no way in my career. I can make a way where there is no way in my finances. The word of God can make a way where there is no way in my health. The word of God can make a way where there is no way in my finances. The word of God can make a way where there is no way in my career. The word of God can make a way where there is no way in my health. The word of God can make a way where there is no way in my marriage. The word of God can make a way where there is no way. That's how you just keep adding to it. You keep building on that. Whatever you want the word of God to make a way for you you speak it you speak life you speak it with the anointing you pray in the spirit and you hear in the spirit and you release in the spirit amen and god will make a way out of no way amen because god moves in the spirit my favorite scripture is genesis chapter one i love reading the book of genesis chapter one because before God did anything, before anything was done, he looked upon the earth. The earth was without shape, without form. The earth was dark. And then he looked at it. And before God did anything, the spirit of the Lord showed up. And the spirit of the Lord moved on the face of the earth. And when the spirit of the Lord was hovering on the face of the earth, then God said, let there be. And there was, when God said, let there be light, there was light. There was light. When God said, let there be darkness, there was darkness. Whatever God spoke, it was activated. The word was released. The word covered everything that had to be done, but only done by the spirit of God. Amen. So any difficulty that is uh, opposing you right now in your life, you have the right by the power and authority that is in you, according to Luke chapter 10, verse 19, you have the right to command every difficulty in your life to be surmounted, to be surmounted. That's S-U-R-M-O-U-N-T-E. Every word in your life is surmounted. Surmounted means breakthrough. Amen. Surmounted means stable. When you release the word, the word is going to be stable. The word is not going to be on shaky ground. The word of God is going to be moving on our behalf, on your behalf. Amen. So right now, I command every difficulty in your life to be surmounted. I command your challenges or any situation in your life to be be surmounted in the name of Jesus. Any difficulty, any obstacle, anything that is causing opposition in your life, I command it to be surmounted because the word of God say you are, we are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So right now you shall prevail. You shall overcome. You shall not be in one place, but you shall ascend out of that situation. You shall ascend out of that challenge in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall rise above in the name of Jesus. You will be on top in the name of Jesus. You will not be beneath. You will be the head. You will not be the tail in the name of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray right now, every opposition, every circumstance, that is causing you trials and tribulations it shall not prevail in your life it is surmounted you have already overcome by the word of your testimony by the blood of the lamb because you love not your life unto death amen you overcame satan with the word of your testimony the word amen Praise God. So that's what I have for you tonight. Speak the word of God. Look for words that is in alignment with the word of God. Like the word surmounted. When you look at the meaning of that word, that word is filled with what God has already spoken into many, many, many lives through centuries, ancestral, through our ancestors. God has already spoken. The word is surmounted. The word means that you're going to prevail. The word means you're going to overcome. The word means you're going to arise above this situation. This situation will not have dominion over your life. And when you pray, you pray in the name of Jesus. And when you pray, you pray with the Holy Spirit. Always pray in the Spirit. And when you pray, you release the power of the blood of Jesus. And when you pray, you, you decree and declare there will be love. There will be sound mind. There will be joy.
joy. There will be self-control because God did not give us the spirit of fear. Amen. So when you begin to learn how to pray often and daily with the word of God, what demon, what demon, what demon can prevail against the word of God? Have you ever known a demonic power to overcome God? Have you ever known of a demonic spirit or any satanic activity prevail against the kingdom of God? Have you? Have you ever known that? Who in the kingdom of darkness has defeated Abba Father? Who? Ah, you tore up Shandari or Sunday. So you got to get back in alignment with the will and the purpose of God and begin to confess life and believe by faith in the name of Jesus because we are not defeated. We have the victory, victory in Christ Jesus. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. But when you are standing against opposition, when suffering, is in your life that is challenging it's either to make you stronger or it's either to make you confront yourself you know because a lot of times these opposition and challenges come in our life because of the things that we have already done without the will of god without consulting god amen so when you see yourself like that you sit there and you say you know what i am an overcoming christ jesus satan cannot defeat my god Amen. Every false idol, every God with a small G, those who think they could beat our big Abba Father, Jehovah Jireh, the God who is more than enough. They think they could defeat Jehovah Rohi, the Lord who is our shepherd. If they think they could defeat Jehovah Gibber, the God of war, I, I there's nothing, there's no evidence, nowhere, no evidence in, anywhere. Not even the Bible that Satan has defeated God. No demonic power has defeated the power of God. So just get out of your, your clothes of slumber and shake it off and begin to pray. And pray by faith and not by sight. And the word of God cometh by hearing and hearing the word. I mean, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. And that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. I released some prophetic words over you that you are an overcomer. The word has already been surmounted in you. Whatever was opposing you is now defeated in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Spend time with God. Spend a lot of time with God. Because the more time you spend with our Father, the more our Father can do for you. Because he's stretching you. Because you're making room for him. And you're going to have more capacity to do more things for him in the body of Christ. Amen. Remember, your gifts mean something when you're here on this earth while you're alive. But when you're dead and gone, those gifts right there are not going to be nothing when you're dead and gone. Nothing. Okay? Even Elijah knew that. When he ascended, he dropped the cloak, and Elisha picked up the cloak. So there's always somebody else to pick up that mantle. Okay? Always somebody else to replace what we have already done. Oh, and they're going to replace it, and they're going to finish that assignment until everything is done. Amen? So, Father, over to you in the name of Jesus. I pray for each person. I pray for Marilyn. I pray for my sister Stacy that's on the line. And everybody else that has came and heard, came and saw and heard. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I pray for the intercession group. That people will begin to grow in the word of God. That they will begin to be strengthened in the word of God. I pray for the blood of Jesus to be your portion. I pray that the blood of the lamb will speak for you. For the blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Amen. I release the atonement of the blood of Jesus over you. May our Father be your portion. May healing be your portion. May your finances be revived so that you, be, you will become debt free. And you will begin to plant in the kingdom of God. Amen. So we could do great exploits in the earth. Amen. Amen. So we give God the praises and the glory. And if you need prayer, put it in the group and let's start praying for one another. You know, that's what this is what the group is about. It's about intercession. It's about prophetic. It's about teaching, releasing, strengthening you. I don't have to do this. 
Amen. I don't have to do this at all. But because the Spirit of the Lord told me to get on here and tell them, use the weapons. So use your weapons. And God bless you, Madeline. God bless you, Stacy. See you tomorrow. And you guys have a great off. Well, good, good night. Great day, good night, whatever. So you guys have a great evening. Thank you for listening. Bye.